The following story is fictional and does not depict any actual person or event. Consult with your medical team before making any changes or decisions regarding your current course of treatment, including diet and exercise. Kidney failure. So, changing my diet, taking the medications, all that's out the window? You'll still need to change your diet and take medication, but unfortunately, you were already in the later stages of chronic kidney disease. Now that your kidneys have stopped functioning altogether, your treatment options are dialysis or kidney transplantation. How does all this work? Kidneys make urine. More specifically, the kidney's job is to filter waste from the blood and extra fluid from the body by excreting it in urine. This cleans the blood, helps keep bones healthy, helps keep blood pressure normal. When someone develops kidney disease, it means that the kidneys are doing a poor job of filtering. And once the kidneys fail altogether, we have to find a different way to get the job done. Either by dialysis, which uses a machine to do what the kidneys are supposed to do, or by transplanting a kidney. It's the same thing that happened to my daddy. Hey, 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 we're not going down that road again. You are gonna do everything that Dr. Jones recommends. And I speak for the whole family when I say we're gonna help you in every way possible. The support of loved ones goes a long way. All right, so what do I do first? We discovered that you're anemic, which is most likely what caused the shortness of breath that led you here. I suspect your high blood sugar level initiated this chain of events. We've already given you a transfusion to raise your iron levels, and because we have to begin the process of cleaning your blood right away, we will insert a temporary catheter into your neck that connects to a dialysis machine. We're also starting you on meds for diabetes. Wait, wait, so I'm starting dialysis today? You are. Had we known months ago that you were headed into kidney failure, we could have slowed down the rate of decline. Ideally, you would have received a transplant and not needed dialysis at all. A person generally has better health if transplanted before needing dialysis, and the transplanted kidney generally lasts longer. Patients generally live longer and have more freedom if they can get a transplant than if they stay on dialysis, since kidneys work 24 hours a day, where dialysis only works while you're connected to the machine. Dialysis is an effective alternative, though, and one we're glad to have because you needed help immediately. But you will have to remain on dialysis until you receive a new kidney. Lots of changes, I know, but they're doable. And you'll be guided through the process every step of the way. Once you're stable, we will discharge you with plenty of aftercare information. And if you find something particularly hard to do, talk to me about it. People aren't all the same, so I don't do one-size-fits-all health care. Either the staff or I can usually come up with modifications to make this diagnosis a little bit less disruptive to your life. I'm gonna to have to run to and from dialysis all the time. How could it not be disruptive? Oh, I need no, I need her to be straight with me. What is this about to do to my life? Kidney failure comes with a lot of new guidelines that have to be implemented quickly. You'll need to change your diet and reduce your fluid intake. It's daunting at first, but in time you get into a rhythm. There's also the option of giving yourself dialysis at home. I don't know how to do that. Nobody does, until they have to. Dr. Fuentes will come by to talk to you in detail about dialysis and transplant options. Dr. Jones, please. I know you have other patients. I'm not trying to keep you. It's not an emergency. My attention is on you. Do you have any other questions for me right now? I don't think so. I, I just don't know how I'm going to do this. And you're going to do this the way you always do. The way we do. Fam. Together we are going to make and stick to a plan to get you through this. You have my number. Do not hesitate to use it. Otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow morning. Keeping her for a couple more days. She's anemic, 
has type 2 diabetes, and her kidneys have failed. That's what happened to Grandpa Benny. Are you sure her kidneys failed? You think I made it up? The doctor came and talked to both of us for a long time. Of course, I'm sure. No need to get an attitude. Why, doctor? Why? Why does that matter? You always worried about the wrong things at the wrong time. That's my child. She is a grown woman and she is my wife. Her kidneys have been having problems for a while and we just didn't know it. I am trying to make sure everybody in this family- Stop! Please! I'm sorry I raised my voice. We're all on edge a little right now. Why, why don't you two go study something? I, your mom's gonna be gone for a couple of days. I don't want things to fall apart while she's gone. It's Saturday. Yeah, and I'm an adult in college, and I don't have any assignments this weekend. You're an adult going to a college you don't pay tuition for. Living in a house you don't pay mortgage for. Now go study something. Come on, Jay. Come back down for dinner time. You know, I love you and respect you for the way you love my daughter and my grandbabies. But I don't appreciate being treated like I don't know nothing about health. What? I've never even thought that. Just because my ways are different than modern medicine doesn't mean that what I know isn't right. Okay, where is this coming from? It's not my fault Benton died. I value your wisdom about a lot of things. I've never, not even once, blamed you for Daddy B's passing. I wanted to tell you and Beverly the minute he was having problems. I thought you could help me talk some sense into him. But he made me promise not to tell anyone. You were keeping your word to him. When I was growing up, we had black doctors in our neighborhood who understood what was important because they were us. They knew Miss Mabel down the street, had bad feet, loved cute shoes. So they sent her to a, a black shoemaker with specifications on what kind of shoes to make just for her. They knew Mr. Taylor was blind in one eye, could barely see it out the other, but was a widower and was looking for a new wife. So the doctors would come and take him out to do things so he would meet someone. I can't imagine that happening today. The only time we went to a white doctor was when it was absolutely necessary. They had machines we didn't have. Or if you got in an accident on the wrong side of town, you had to go where they would take you the fastest. Then what? Then you got whatever kind of care they decided to give you that day. You break your leg on a Thursday, you might end up with a cast and crutches. Break your leg on a Tuesday, you might come out minus a leg. Are you serious? I am. They weren't careful with us. And I often heard stories that they would not give us anesthesia during surgery because they were saving it. I mean, healthcare still has a long way to go in this country, but it's not like that today. And you know Dr. Jones. Yeah. And what if Beverly and one of Dr. Jones' white patients has a problem at the same time? Who do you think's gonna get her attention first, huh? She can't watch Beverly 24 hours. So when Dr. Jones goes home, what if this new doctor that comes in is someone who wears a white sheet on his days off? Beverly's my only child. I will not have someone butchering my baby. We won't let that happen. We didn't know about Daddy being enough time to help him. But we do know about Bev. She's gonna handle this obstacle like she handles everything else. <laughs> Bev, don't play. Got that right. I believe Dr. Jones is in her corner. 
we're not doing this alone. And we are there to take care of each other. Forever and ever. Amen. Come in. I can't sleep either. I made a decision. What decision? I'm gonna give mama one of my kidneys. I've been researching living donation and people live just fine with one kidney. Plus, I'm young and healthy. And we're related, so my kidney will be more like hers than some dead stranger kidney. It's not that simple. You're not automatically a match because you're related. And you're probably too young anyway. You sure? No. But I am sure that neither mama nor daddy's gonna let you give up one of your kidneys. Even if she might die? Is it because I may get kidney disease too and they don't want me to only have one kidney left? She's not gonna die, EJ. Let's think good things. Here. Like what? I don't know. What makes you happy? I like reading. No, I mean, Happy thoughts about family. Oh, oh, I remember this one time Grandpa Benny was chasing me around the house <laughs> and I fell down the stairs and broke my arm. <laughs> felt so bad, he gave me $5 every day my arm was in a cast. That's one of your happy thoughts? Yep. <laughs> he said a man can't have a broke arm and a broke pocket at the same time. <laughs> he felt bad about you getting hurt. Yeah, I know. But we used to play around like that all the time. I just tripped on my own feet. What about you? What makes you happy? You know that song that Mama likes to hum sometimes? When she's in the kitchen, baking by herself, thinks nobody's listening? It's a nice Sunday breakfast. Mm. You had a rough morning too, huh? <laughs> Tread lightly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I drifted off for about an hour. Then woke up. Couldn't get back to sleep. Decided to get up and make breakfast for everyone before I headed to the hospital this morning. I was too tired to get myself dressed to go to church, but I suspect God will forgive me for that transgression. <laughs> but I still want to go. I think it'll do the kids good, too. Oh, EJ's bedroom door was open this morning when I got up, but he was not in there. Where was he? Knocked out on the floor next to T's bed. <laughs> they used to do that all the time when they were younger. Mm. He'd go in a room, she'd cover him up with a blanket. He laid there beside her bed all night like a little puppy. Mm. Mm. Young Bones will let you do that. Mm. But no one over 35 should even try it. <laughs> all right. You got breakfast handled. I'm going to go and get the kids up so we can eat and go. Sounds like a plan. All right. See you in a little bit. Sure. 
Uh, okay, okay. No, 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 this, but this, looks, this looks right. Guys, it's, it's right down? here. Oh, it's right Grandma, here. Yeah. Grandma knows. Right here. Thank you, Grandma. Go in. She's awake. Mama. Hello. Hi. Hi. I don't like what they're feeding me, but they're feeding me. Hello. Oh, hi everybody. I'm Dr. Fuentes. Dr. Jones asked me to stop by and talk to you, but I see you have visitors, so I'll come back. Oh, this is my family. We can talk. And Dr. Jones said you would be stopping by. Hi, I'm Ernestine Jackson. I'm Beverly's mother. Nice to meet you, Mrs. Jackson. Mm -hmm. I'm Tracy. EJ. Hello. <laughs> oh, good to see you again, Mr. Morris. <laughs> All right, well, let's take a look. Thank you. Okay. Once you're discharged, we can either set you up with peritoneal home dialysis or hemodialysis at a dialysis center. Most patients find that at-home dialysis tends to be more convenient. Well, how will I know what to do? Staff will train you at the dialysis center, then you can start the treatments at home. Can they show us too? Oh, sure. In fact, at-home dialysis is required to have a trained caregiver, so we recommend family members get trained in case the patient needs their assistance. The more support, the better. Now, will I have to give myself dialysis every day? With home dialysis, you'll need to do it a few times each day for short periods or each evening. Or if you decide to go into a center, it could be three or four times a week, but for longer periods of time. I want to do the caregiver training. Uh, me too. Probably going to take me a little while to get the hang of things, but I just don't want to do the wrong thing. You know? Absolutely. Take your lifestyle into consideration and make the decision that works best for you. Peritoneal dialysis tends to have better outcomes, but the best dialysis plan is the one that you'll stick with. Does dialysis hurt? There's usually some discomfort when the fistula is placed. That's the surgical connection created between an artery and a vein that helps make it easier for the dialysis machine to clean her blood. Mm. I just want to be clear. Dialysis is a life-saving procedure for patients with failed kidneys, but it doesn't work as well as a transplant. You'll have strict dietary restrictions and fluid restrictions. You'll have to schedule your daily activities around dialysis. And energy levels tend to be lower with dialysis than a transplant. In general, most people have better qualities of lives and tend to be happier with a transplant than with dialysis. Why is that? Because the dialysis machine doesn't produce the hormones that control blood pressure and make red blood cells. Only a new kidney can do that. Also, transplants from living donors tend to last longer than those from a person who has already died. Statistically, African Americans have a better outcome with a living donation. Dr. Jones is with the transplant team and will schedule an evaluation to determine if you're a good transplant candidate. The evaluation consists of several tests and takes a while to complete. Can I donate my kidney to my mother? I want to help her get well and be around for a long time. Baby, that is very sweet. But I want you to keep your kidneys right where they are. See? Actually, a lot of people do have their friends and family tested to see if they're healthy enough and a close enough match to be a living donor. But you do have to be at least 18. I told you. I signed up to be an organ donor when I got my driver's license. That's a little different, but still very important. If more people signed up to be deceased donors, the wait wouldn't be nearly as long for deceased donor organs. So, thank you. Tracy's 19. Can she donate a kidney? How are you just gonna volunteer my kidney like that? Don't be selfish. I'm not being you are being selfish. selfish. You're just, you're very easy to do. Tracy, we only want people to donate if they're really motivated to do so. In fact, donors can back out even on the day of surgery if they change their minds. An ideal kidney donor is someone who has little to no risk of developing kidney disease in the future. And since your mother and grandfather were diagnosed, your risk may be too high. Neither one of you has given me a kidney, okay? I would like to keep my kids' bodies intact. Thank you. I think I want to be screened as a potential donor. Great. Anyone interested in being a living donor would need to contact the transplant center directly, so I'll get you that info. Thank you. Anybody else want to be screened? Well, um, <clears throat> I would like to take a look at the surgeon before I commit to that. Oh, okay.
I'm so sorry. I don't mean to disturb your privacy. <laughs> this little curtain does not privacy make, so... <laughs> it's not like I was doing anything important anyway. I'm Beverly, by the way. Nirtala Uribe. That's so pretty. I've never heard that name before. Thank you. I was named after my mom's best friend. She passed away before I was born. Actually, her name was Myrtle, but my dad vetoed that, so they settled on the Spanish version, <laughs> Mirtala. Good save, Dad. Right? <laughs> I heard you humming. What was that song? I didn't even realize I was humming. It was most likely the tune my dad made up. He used to hum it while he was working, and every now and then he'd sing it. Would you mind singing it for me? I'm a singer-songwriter and a real sucker for a catchy melody. I'm, I'm not a singer. <laughs> if you can talk, you can sing. I'm not judging you, I swear. All right, uh, uh. <clears throat> it goes, nothing gets old, but these old clothes, nothing gets old, but these old clothes. Ta -da. Okay. <gasps> Bravo! Oh, there's just something about it. Yeah. There is. <laughs> oh, it's my husband. Oh, I'll leave you to it. And I'll put my headphones in so you can have some <laughs> actual privacy. Thank you. <laughs> you miss me yet? You know I do. Yeah, what do you miss? Mm, I miss the way you put your cold feet on my legs in the middle of the night. You are a liar. <laughs> Can't see you smile, so just wanted to hear you laugh. You'd be proud, though. Actually worked out a good system. Tracy is baking the cupcakes. Tracy who? Seriously, the girl can bake. She used to help Daddy decorate, but I swear, more icing ended up in her belly than on the pastries. <laughs> well, hey, she's got it now. And she and your mother taught EJ how to decorate. They taught who what? But don't make me get out this bed and run home. <laughs> your mother's taking the orders. Got a bunch from some church folks today. So I had to listen to what she was saying to make sure she wasn't offering any freebies. Please tell me she wasn't. She wasn't. But she did tell everyone that you were in the hospital and that you know how high hospital bills are nowadays. <laughs> oh. I keep telling her to stop telling those people my business. I told her the same thing. And? And she said that your business it's good for our business. <laughs> yeah. Said a few people were interested in becoming donors. Somebody even offered to drive you to and from dialysis. Go ahead, mama. EJ is building a website for the cupcakery this weekend so we can finally get in the 21st century like everybody else. Wow. Well, sounds like y'all don't need me. You're joking, right? You're the heart of this family. And the only reason I'm talking business with you is because I know you would worry if I did. True. Hmm. So since it seems like our kids are our new labor force, are they doing their homework? Getting a good night's sleep? Come on, Bev. You sound like I'm running a sweatshop over here. I'm not going to have them flunk and live with us for the rest of their lives. <laughs> <laughs> School and health are priorities. Oh, and Tracy. She tries to substitute agave for sugar in your red velvet cupcakes. But <laughs> your mother handled that situation. Do not let her ruin my reputation. <laughs> mm -mm. <laughs> uh, I love y'all so much. We know. And we love you back, babe. <laughs> I know. And now it is time for you to get some rest. I'll be over between morning and afternoon deliveries and again in the evening. Okay. Good night, babe. Hang up. No, you hang up. No, you. Okay. Okay. Love you. 
I love you too. Night. I do not want to miss my first class. Oh, my goodness. Hey. Just keep going. Hey, Grandma. Hi. Bye, Grandma. Bye. Have a good day, y'all. All right, let's go. <laughs> Dr. Fuentes. Uh, hi. This is Beverly Morris's mother. Right. Mm -hmm. I was wondering, hypothetically, if someone wanted to be tested to see if they could donate a kidney to someone else, how would they go about doing it? Uh -huh. I see. Well, have I got a gang of folks for you. You want them to call the transplant center? Yes. <laughs> 